In August of 2022, as soon as Tsunekazu Ishihara announced that the 2023 World Championships would be taking place in Japan, I decided I was going. Indigo and I had planned a trip to Japan in 2020 that we had to cancel for obvious reasons, and I was feeling pretty bummed about missing out on Worlds in London, but Worlds in Yokohama could make it all better. When the dates were announced in February, we immediately started making our plans. One week in and around Tokyo, then Worlds, then another week visiting Kyoto, Nara, and Osaka. We booked hotels right away and booked flights a few weeks later when the prices were right. Then it turned out that World's Spectator Passes would be sold by lottery, and so would most of the side events happening around Yokohama. We put our names in for everything we could, but we did not win any of them. The only tickets we were able to get were for the Pokemon Symphony, which was not sold by lottery. So we would be going to Japan for Worlds, but not to Worlds, which put a pretty serious damper on the trip. But damn it, the trip was booked, we were going, and we were going to have fun. Things did kind of work out for us in the end, but that's a story for later. So August 6th, 2023, Indigo and I take a quick flight up to Vancouver, and then a very long flight to Tokyo. Uh, hi, I'm Libris. This is Indigo. Hello. <laughs> and this is Flora traveling with us. So this is day four? Something oh, like that. End of day four of our Japan trip. I just wanted to record a little debrief of all the stuff that we did because yeah. we've been running around a lot. <laughs> yeah, you haven't missed any videos. This is, this is our first time doing it. <laughs> so day zero, we arrived in, I guess technically the afternoon, but we didn't make it to our hotel until the evening. And we were absolutely exhausted. It was just a convenience store dinner kind of day. And then Pass out? <laughs> yeah, no <I'm> kidding. <laughs> well, attempt to pass out because of the jet lag. That's awesome. Yes, it was It was an awful night in terms of sleeping. But our hotel, as you can see, is very nice. Ooh, uh, simple, uh, uh, traditional Japanese uh, futon kind of thing. Sliding doors, at least some of them. <laughs> yeah. And in the morning of day one, we found out that there is a... Uh, stamp rally going on, so if you go to different stations, you can get stamps of different <laughs> Pokemon. And uh, we're at Shibuya, and the so the very first station stamp that we got was Shibuya, the Sprigatito, which is perfect because it's easily the best starter of this generation. We also picked up the Tatsugiri. Um, stamp at Yokohama Station. You get a prize for at least three. We haven't picked up the third stamp yet, but we know where it is. And and we're going to. We're planning on getting it tomorrow. We did not. We had missed the stamp the one time we went to that station, and after that, the station was just a little too far out of the way, and we didn't end up going back. Oh well. We went to, the first thing we did was go to Shinjuku Gyo in uh, National Garden. We walked around a lot. The cicadas were very, very loud. Can you make your noise again? It sounds like a Geiger counter. Yeah. There were some trees that were roped off with warnings about hornets, and we could see dozens of beetles on these trees and scattered on the ground around them that were seemingly killed by the hornets. Gruesomely fascinating. Yeah, but it was very pretty. Mm -hmm. The park is like also just huge. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and broken into themed sections. Mm -hmm. Which is very pretty. And different sections would look for it in different seasons, too. Yeah, Yeah, I feel like it must be designed for that, right? Yeah, it definitely was. They had a artwork just kind of displaying it. Oh, like, I didn't see that. Yeah. Or I didn't notice it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. there was one where I was like, oh, this part will be really pretty in spring and have the beautiful cherry blossoms. This part will have the momichi trees and be very pretty. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, right. The museum did say, like, these are the flowers that bloom in, in spring. These are the ones that bloom in summer and so on and so forth. With the map of where you can find them and everything. So if you're like, oh, it is late summer. These are the flowers that might bloom in bloom. Let's go look for them. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> um, what was also really nice about the park um, was that 
they had rest houses, which is very cool. Yeah. <laughs> Quite literally cool. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> On a very hot day. It was... <laughs> I feel like it was probably the hottest and most humid day. Yeah, or like it, it was it was the one that felt the most uncomfortable to be outside, I think. Definitely. Yeah. 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 It's just something and, 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 and it was the one it. and it was the one that we wanted to be outside on, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We we just chose hard mode. Like, yeah. yeah. Of course. <laughs> feeling out first. Yeah. <laughs> there was also the greenhouse uh, that made us think that that might be related to Celadon City. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, ha I haven't looked it up to confirm, but greenhouse, Celadon Gym seems to make sense. Victory Bell were everywhere. <laughs> that, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we saw multiple Pokemon there. Yes, in Japan, Pokemon exist. <laughs> Eventually, we were quite tired, but we had tickets for a kabuki show in the evening. Mm -hmm. So we had to come back here. We showered, refreshed, and just like rested for a little bit because that was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we went to see Shin Suikoden, the new water margin. I will not read this entire synopsis for you because it is very detailed. And incomplete. It ends on a cliffhanger. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. But maybe I'll look up the synopsis, uh, mm -hmm. like the full synopsis. I haven't done that yet. I didn't find a full synopsis of the play, but you can read about the Chinese novel it is based on. I also found a short trailer for the play, so that's where the clips I'm using here come from. The Kabuki play was entirely in Japanese. We did not really understand what was going on. No. Um, <laughs> me and Flora understood some individual phrases and words that gave us a little bit of context. Mm -hmm. uh, the only time that I knew exactly what was happening was when the the green guy was fighting the girl with the two swords, and they got they got up close, and he's like, "Oh, Utsukushi!" and I'm like, uh, "He's fallen for her right there." <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but the the music was fantastic. Yes. Was um, the costume work mm -hmm. was beautiful. There was a lot of action too. Uh, there were ninjas, so there were like acrobatics. There were like sword fights and stuff, so fight choreography was fantastic. Mm -hmm. And the harness dragon. Where they actually pull them up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, over the audience and above even the mezzanine audience, which was really cool. Yeah. Yeah, the main character, I guess, uh, <laughs> rides a dragon and there was even like smoke coming out of the dragon. Yeah. And everything. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> and the rains it's, would make it wiggle, which would be terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I like how he, he's riding it and he's like looking all regal, and then every once in a while he goes, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> It's unfortunate that we can't, that we couldn't like photograph or film anything because I might not have not have any visuals for it, which is yeah. unfortunate because it, yeah. like the parts that we could see were the visuals and the music and um, go to Japan is what we're yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like um, immediately to it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is yeah. only for August. Yeah. So. <laughs> but like especially considering the performance happens every day. Mm -hmm. kind of like that. basically, it, I think it, I think it is actually every single day. Yeah. There might be like one or two like yeah. holidays or something that was a break. But Mondays off or something. Something like that. The show something was like that. three hours long. So. Yes, we yeah. watched the, the full show. Uh, it was two acts, and it is possible to buy tickets for just one act if you don't want the full experience. Um, honestly, it was probably uh, not the best idea to go to the Kabuki right after our our trip because. I was exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was nodding off and like it's not because it wasn't good. It's just because I I had slept terribly the night before yeah, and I, I think it's more just the jet lag that's a really affected yeah, thing. Being um, in a dark room after yeah. switching time zones that dramatically. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not a good idea. <laughs> so you know, I was awake for all the action. I was awake for the big musical number. I was awake for the dragon. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what else is there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was that was day one. Day two, that was Gunma. 
We took a three and a half hour trip by train from Tokyo to Tomioka, a small city in Gunma Prefecture. Parts of Gunma Prefecture serve as inspiration for Pewter City and Mount Moon, and we wanted to visit the Gunma Museum of Natural History. The reason we went all the way out there for you know, the three and a half hour trek was because the Pokemon Fossil Museum was there. There was a lot of confusion to get there. To start, the museum's English website is minimal, to put it lightly, and their Japanese website was super confusing for a Japanese newbie like me. So thank you to Saturin and Crystalia on Donfan.Social for helping me navigate it to make our reservations. So we, we had to take, I think, two trains just to get to the bullet train station. <laughs> uh, we got very confused at the bullet train station. It was not clear exactly which train we were supposed to be taking, but a very helpful uh, convenience store attendant uh, pointed us in the right direction. I still think it's a little bit funny that, like, if you look on the map, the longest leg of the trip by distance is the Shinkansen, and I'm pretty sure that was the shortest train ride. We took four trains that, that day, and the shortest one was the bullet train that went the longest distance. <laughs> yeah. yeah <laughs> Why they're there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Then we wanted to take a taxi from the last train station to the museum, but we couldn't figure that out, so we ended up taking the 30 minute walk. There we go, I've added Yanma to my Pokedex. <laughs> the way in was a giant hill. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was like nice and flat for, I don't know, two thirds of the way, and then it's a hill right at the end, and so you're. We were like, oh, you know, it was overcast. It was humid, but it wasn't as hot as the day before. So it was like, it feels okay. And then, and then this hill. Yes. <laughs> that was Ta-da! We came all the way from Canada to see moose. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the museum was fantastic. Yeah. Even before we got to the Pokemon exhibit, which was like towards the end, like the special exhibit room was after the main exhibit halls. It still really surprises me how packed that place was with stuff. Uh, not even with people, although it did get packed with people at one point. But like, in terms of square footage, Mm -hmm. of like just how much stuff there was to look at mm -hmm. in the relatively small space. I've been to much bigger museums that had like, like less, less yeah. stuff. Density, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and not like, um, like at least some of the museums that we're more used to, like it'll be like smaller pieces and like a few big pieces that mm -hmm. are sort of like the main attraction. The Google Museum had significant, impressive pieces and a lot of them. Um, in a small amount of space, so it was very, very impressive. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there, there was this one room like that was called the Darwin's room, I think. There was a lot of stuff on display, and there were sh there were like drawers, <laughs> an entire wall, <laughs> an entire like cupboard of drawers of stuff that you could pull out and look at. Like, if you ever go, like, make a day out of it. Like, yes, yes, day make day it a whole day. day. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a one-hour museum. None of us are fluent in Japanese, and none of the signage was in English. The, they're like, the titles of the signs were in English, but not the full text. And I'm the kind of person who reads all the text when I go to the museum, or, or as much as seems interesting to me, which usually is the majority. Uh, at least in the Museum of Natural History. <laughs> yes. Can't <laughs> confirm. <laughs> so it was kind of a relief, actually, that I couldn't read all of the signs, mm -hmm. because then we absolutely would have been there all day. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then we got to the Pokemon section. <gasps> so so good. It was so good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the signs were, were still all in Japanese, but they actually had... Uh, basically a website. They had free Wi-Fi at the museum and you could just access this website through a QR code that just had all of the information in English and I think in other languages as well. Because we'd already spent so much time, I didn't actually like go through and read everything. And it seemed from what I did read that the information was stuff that, all, that I already knew. So it didn't feel like I was you know, missing out on something. But we downloaded the website. Hopefully we'll be able to actually 
read it more more calmly mm-hmm. afterwards. Yeah. And if not, we got the book. <laughs> we we got the book of the exhibit. Um, that basically has everything. <laughs> yeah, pretty much the yeah. whole. All of the information. It only has it in Japanese, but I mean, if this is what we have to deal with, we've got Google Translate and the the, the like camera translation. So we can practice more. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess so. <laughs> Um, and but, uh, yeah, the exhibit, I wanted to say, like, it was so good how they had real life information along with the, um, real life parallel, like fossil kind of on display. Um, and then they also had, you know, the Pokemon the fictional information next to it. Um, and so I just think like, obviously it's a very informative for an, like an adult, but also just great for children to kind of like, you know, they're already into Pokemon, they're already like enjoying themselves with it. And so then they have, you know, kind of this like lore information and then they also have the real life comparison. It was a great example you know? of using Pokemon to teach something. Yes. Like it uses the Pokemon as the hook mm-hmm. to teach uh, <laughs> real world paleontology and science, things like that. We are at yeah, Gunma Museum of Natural History. AKA Pewter Museum with a Kabutops fossil. It's awesome. <laughs> okay, I don't know if I kept everyone in frame for all or even most of this, but hopefully I did. Okay. The other thing I wanted to mention was just like the seeing, also from like an artistic standpoint, the inspiration for Anorith, for instance. You got to see the actual mm. fossil for that or the actual creature that was prehistoric. And then mm. Um, and then you see Anor, and then you just you actually notice how much um, attention to detail went into the Pokemon design. Yeah, like the, the similarity is really evident. You're just mm-hmm. seeing them side by side. You're like, oh yeah, uh, okay, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> Goodness, yeah, especially because these like sea creatures are so fantastical. That, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Some of them would be like, did they just make that point of it up? And no, they're pretty close to one. Yeah. <laughs> Also, the implication that Aurora's frills are its bones in one of those scale models. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that does bother me a little bit. <laughs> Strange. <laughs> flexible bones. <laughs> yeah. uh, the- we were hoping to go to uh, Mount Akagi afterwards, which is basically the equivalent of Mount Moon. And it's in sort of the same area. It's, it's also in Gunma, but it's, uh, it was about... Uh, an hour and a half drive away, like if we'd managed to get a taxi or something. We just spent so long at the museum that we decided it wasn't worth, you know, the the trek there and then how much longer it would also be to get back home. Yeah. Our feet hurt. On the way back, we just kind of accidentally found a Papa Pokemon Center in Takasaki. So <laughs> really far away from here, but something that might have been, you know, set up because of all the Pokemon world mm-hmm. hype. Mm-hmm. And or the, um, because it's on the way to that reason. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> true. Uh-huh. Now I just saw a Pikachu in the window and I was like, what's that? Yeah. <laughs> the advertisement was huge. And so it's like, well, they're clearly doing some sort of Pokemon pop-up thing. Yeah. So maybe it's a pop-up cafe, maybe it's a pop-up Pokemon Center, so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, well, we yeah. couldn't, from the station where we were standing, we couldn't tell what it was. So we were just like, oh, you know, we have some flexibility with our time going back. Mm-hmm. So let's go check it out. Oh, it was also in Takasaki way at the station when we were trying to figure out whether or not to go to this Pokemon Center that I had an older Japanese gentleman ask me for directions <laughs> and I was able to answer. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> He asked me for directions to the bullet train, which thankfully was where we had come from. I mean, technically it was where we were going, but we'd taken the bullet train on the way there. So I was able to say, I think it's that way. And my my very rustic Japanese was enough to cover that much. <laughs> <laughs> that was it, right? We got home and we were exhausted. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> Two for three. <laughs> no. no. Okay. That's it for today. This travel vlog slash recap will be coming out in five chapters. In the next chapter, we go to the Pokemon Symphony and to Mount Fuji. See you then.